Adam, thanks for your time. What's it like to be the Premiership coach? Tell me what it's, what's going through the last few months, the emotional side of it, and what it's done for you in Perth. Uh, I haven't reflected too much on that, King. It's, it's uh, a couple of months of enjoyment and pride, and uh, it's a little bit different in WA than what it was a couple of years ago for, for me personally. But to be honest, the, the season moves pretty quickly, and then all of a sudden the draft happens and trade week, and... You're planning for pre-season and you, you, you're on to the next phase of the, the season. So definitely a, a special time at, at the club and in WA for, for a couple of months there. Do you allow yourself some time to just get away from football, whether it be with the, the kids and, and the beautiful Family. wife or, or, or not, and just say, look, how good's this, and, and just enjoy it for a period of time? Um, oh, look, I think every year you look for the opportunity to get away with your family. So uh, we didn't go anywhere this year and I didn't do any study. I just stayed with the family. So we've got four kids, mate. So <laughs> getting the school right and, you know, my son started high school this year and you know, uh, another daughter started year 11. So just being with the family was the, the main priority and, um, you know, they're not mad footy nuts, the, 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 the kids or, or my wife. So we, we can break away pretty easily. You've had a lot going on. You've built a house in the last 12 yeah. months. It's been it's been a hectic time for you. But in a lot of ways, you were thrilled to have that that outlet from football. Yeah, I think what I did learn personally throughout the year was having a release or something different to to get into when you do have time off um, was pretty important. So we 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 built a house over there, and, and I broke I broke the builder. <laughs> I smashed him. <it. laughs> so uh, and that that was a good release for me, and something I did in my day off, and something I could really get into in the off season. So we're in. We're in the house now and I've got nothing to do, so... How much over budget and how much longer do oh, it no, take? No, we're OK. They were pretty good, <laughs> uh, the guys. And, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a good experience. So what sort of things did it do for you? I mean, we, we've spoken about this privately, but it allowed you to go and choose colours of your tiles and those just get totally yeah. away from just the day-to-days -day of coaching. You can't help but um, do more as a coach. So you're looking at more vision, uh, strategy, opposition, how my boys go on how the coach is going. So having something to obsess over um, outside your family was good for me, but that's not for everyone. Some people play golf, some people surf. Or, you know, I was involved in, in, in that. So uh, everyone's got a release, so everyone needs a release. I do recall back in the day when you were playing, you had a lot of different business opportunities <laughs> going on with Peter Bell and Kent Kingsley and the like. Yep. How many of those businesses do you think would have actually still been viable and running now had you gone down um, that path? Let me think, I had a, an internet company, um, which I had, I had no idea what we were doing, um, but none of us did, so that, that failed pretty quickly with Peter Bell. I had a, a lawn mowing business, Kanga lawn Clippings we called it, so we thought we'd tap into the members. They didn't last too long. I bought some vending machines, a dog wash. A dog a wash, that's right. Yeah, Happy Jack. How'd that go? Well, it would have gone well, but we got bored of it. <laughs> No, we didn't. We all, we all moved on. I, I left North and uh, went to Hawthorne and, uh, yeah, the, old, the dog wash is sort of um, part way a little bit there. So. Of all of them, the dog wash was probably the favourite? <laughs> well, no, the Kanga Clippings I thought would have been a good, good venture. <laughs> I got, that could have kicked off, um, but it didn't. Adam's mowing. Um, tell us about the relationship with Justin Langer. We have only heard bits and pieces oh, yeah. and, and what that's done for, for you personally, you know, the messaging that he's been able to offer you and, and for the yeah. group. Um, look, he's, he happens to live around the corner, um, so I see him a fair bit. He's going through his own different phase now with being the Australian coach, so he's gone to another level. Um, when we first met, he was coaching WA Cricket and Scorchers, so, and he'd just come onto the board. And his passion and his, his spirit that he carries um, day to day was something you could notice really, really early. So he spoke to our players, I think it was heading into the final series in 17 before the Port game. The game that Luke Shuey kicked the goal after the siren and he, he did speak a lot about spirit and mateship and, and perhaps that was the last thing for us to get right. We, um, we definitely had something there going with the players but to, to bring that out amongst the group, um, I think he just got us over the line with that and then well, that carried into last year, no doubt. So those type of people become available to you when, you, when you're in the position you are. How often would you meet with someone like that? Or is it a uh, phone call or is it in passing? A bit of both, mate. Yeah, I think there's opportunities to meet a lot of people like that um, when you get into senior coach position and obviously still being a relatively new coach and young. I'm always learning, always want to get as much information as I can from others. And then there's the other side where you try and pass on information and share stories. So he's in a different phase now, which is, which is great for him. Um, and he's gone through a real steep learning curve as well. So 
you know, in WA, it's a little bit different. There's not a heap of um, professional coaches. Um, obviously, um, Trevor Gleeson as well with the Wildcats is um, someone who's got tremendous stability and, and success as well. It's someone who you know, I'd like to tap into as well. Talked about the family. We're, we're, we're really tapping into that at the moment, if you haven't yeah. picked that up. But yeah, um, that vibe up. So the, the family have settled in Perth. It takes a while to, to, to get familiar with those surroundings. It's, it's a challenge with the kids, and obviously you've got... You've got a handful of them, mate. Got a few, yeah. With four. So how's that all come about? Are they, are they set in now? Are they, are they on the right track? Well, this is our sixth year, so uh, it's gone pretty quick. Well, we think it's gone pretty quick. So we've got kids now who don't know and can't remember their time in Melbourne, you know, so pretty important phase of their lives, going from primary school to high school, those sort of things. So uh, it's a great place for, for your family and bringing up your kids. It's, um, it's a well-connected community, so good schools. So they're all enjoying it, you know, and, and um, you know, you've got to keep an eye on that, especially uh, your partner and your wife moving all the way over to WA. It is, it is a long way, but um, there's a lot of benefits for sure. Do they, do they feel the pressure of your role, of your, of your job? Do they ride that at all? I mean, we, we've heard a lot about Nathan Buckley having yeah. to sort of guard his, his boys from, from that sort of heat. No, we're, all right. we're, we're touch wood. We're, I don't bring work home at all. Um, I try not to show too much stress around home and they don't show much stress around me. I'd, footy's not our number one topic in the family. So, you know, we just got a new dog, <laughs> another dog, got two Kelpies now for some reason. Um, so that we're just a normal family, mate. And I've got a pretty important job, but it's not the most important. How planned is your life now? I mean, we, we've heard about flights being booked for the end of next year already yeah. and things like that. How regimented is, is your week? Uh, I suppose it's a little bit different. The football club and the, the football department have to be meticulous with their planning. Like we, we need to put in, put in our flights and accommodation in November for the draw next year. And as much as that sounds like pretty obvious, it's difficult to get that right with accommodation and travel party of 50 or 60. So from a structure point of view, it's, it's meticulous. Um, planning personally for life um, is based around your contract, to be honest. And you can't plan past three or four years, really, as a family. So whether you want to build or buy or kids' school and where they're going to be, that's difficult. It's difficult when you're a coach in an interstate club. It's even harder for assistant coaches who are on limited contracts and um, you have know, got kids. So quite often our, our coaching department, it's difficult because they've got either really young kids or the kids are, have gone through high school. It's hard for the, the middle-aged coach uh, to travel and that's part of the things we've got to deal with. So, yeah, at the club, meticulous. Uh, very difficult as a as a family man, I suppose, or trying to plan for the next five or six years. What do you enjoy the most about coaching? Uh, oh, look, I suppose the team environment for me, it's and having success as a as a club um, is something that I suppose I didn't understand how important that was, and until we actually went all the way, I had to realise how many people are so proud of our players and, and the club and. It's been a holistic thing for us in the last couple of months and I think our players have handled it really well. So the pride of seeing your players grow is something that you probably don't feel as a player. So as a coach, you actually, you see the 17 year old now have kids and success and different phases of their life and to be part of that, that's, that's really satisfying. Coaching's changed enormously and you hear every coach talk yeah. about, you just can't treat these young men now as you were treated probably when you arrived on the scene as a player. Let us into how much different. I mean, we talk a lot about Dennis and his message and those sorts yeah. of things, but not just Dennis. I think most coaches were, were, were that way inclined back in the, the 90s. Uh, they were, but and that's what we needed back in the 90s. So I don't think the, the style of which the coaches go about it now would have worked in the 90s. It wouldn't have worked with you. But what wouldn't have worked? What, what, what specifically? Oh, I, I think we, we probably crave the discipline, and I think the players still crave it now, but how you go about it and the understanding of the player is, you know, we've got so many staff, um, so much more clarity about what a player needs, and you just can't ignore it anymore. So I, I think the, the saying is, you know, you can't treat everyone evenly, but you've got to treat them fairly, and I think that's the, the mantra which we live by, all coaches, really. So, I mean, a good example was Liam Ryan early in this pre-season. We, we had a camp that... It's an army type of camp, you know, test you out with resilience and sleep deprivation and their log carrying, all the stuff that we used to do and uh, it got really hard and it, uh, it was too hard for him. And, but that's OK. Uh, we, then we went to a point, we stopped, he trained the next day, um, got a bit of a media hype over there for a day or two, but 
I don't think that would have happened back in in our time. Kingy would have uh, bad luck. We're just going to break you, and um, we're just a little bit more aware of the player and their thoughts. And the club's more of a sanctuary now. There's so much pressure with what they've got to deal with um, off field and how they deal with it on social media. All these things. Mental health's massive now in the comp. So to be aware of that um, and not act on it is, you know, you can't do that. You've got a young coaching group. You've always had a young coaching yeah. group. Is that by design or is it just at the stage of life where you like to have them or...? I think what I said before with the coaches that we, we have access to, it's hard to get the guy who's coached for 10 years um, if they're not from WA because their kids are at school in wherever they're from interstate. And getting them over is a big, uh, big challenge. I mean, with Sam Mitchell getting him um, as a young, young father um, of three, it's, it's difficult to, to come from the East and, and um, change your life for a small contract, um, small tenure. So, yeah, we've always gone with the younger, the younger coach and try and work with them and mould them and, and, and see them grow as well. And we've got some really good coaches on our books at the moment. We always get the question on paganisms. Have you ever dropped any of those lines into your coaching at all? Would the, would the boys say that there's, there's the odd paganism? Well, they wouldn't you? know. <laughs> I don't think it's an original thought. Um, everything I do, I just copy from someone. He'd <laughs> work that out by now. So, oh, look, he, he's, he had a massive influence on my, on my career as a player. And then, of course, Dean Laidley as well. And then and seeing Alistair and how he went about it. So I haven't got a you know, massive, um, you know, coaching pool. I was fortunate as a player and he had two coaches and then um, then of course uh, seen Alistair work. So I reflect on those guys all the time. What would they do in situations like that? I th and quite often all three of them come up in my mind. We saw the, the post-grand final Dennis giving you the, the Jock McCarman. Yeah. Just fantastic scenes for, for kangaroos people and we still see both of you guys as, as kangaroos people yeah. obviously. An amazing moment. Do you still talk to Dennis? Do you have a relationship with those sorts not of people? Not really. I haven't. Uh, I, I rang him grand final day, actually, and I was thinking, um, you know, sometimes you think the game's moved so far and then sometimes you think, geez, it hasn't changed at all. So what hasn't changed is, is grand final day and the pressures and, and coming off a loss in 15, I was just thinking about 1998 for us and, and we, we lost 98 and won 99 and I thought... I wonder what Dennis did differently in the pre-game and the build-up on the day. So the week building up to the grand final is a lot different interstate. It's almost impossible to compare with a Victorian club who train around the corner and they're caught up in the whole week and it's the sleep. But we fly over on Thursday um, and we train in front of 10,000 on Monday or Tuesday. So the plane, the accommodation, the family, the tickets, everything's just times by 10. I think the whole club come over, over 100 staff. So where do they stay? So all that's different, but what's not different is grand final day and how you handle that. And um, I asked Dennis a few questions about what he did differently. Um, he just said uh, in 98, the biggest thing he said was that at half time we were winning and all the support staff gave us a bit of a rounding of, uh, applause when we come off the ground at half time. I don't remember, I don't know if you do or not. But he did, and um, he gave him a bit of a cook. Uh, and then before 99, he said, just calm, calm your staff down and just make sure everyone's relaxed, in his own words. So I did that, and, you know, just something a little like that, um, you know, was really good for him. Who are your kids' favourite players? Uh, uh, Elsa doesn't know anything at the moment. She's six. Um, she knows Nick Nat's name. Uh, <laughs> Ali's in love with Liam Duggan. Um, Duggan. Yeah, yeah. Um, likes his moustache for some reason. <laughs> uh, Owen, Owen bounces a little bit. Yeah, he's just getting into footy now. He's just started year seven, so it's, um, it's just part of uh, his normal life. So I, he doesn't see these guys as superstars. Man. He just He's down the club all the time, so he bounces a bit. And, uh, and Miller doesn't really care, a bit like my wife. Is he part of the father-son program? Are we going to see, yeah, him? Uh, going to see him down the path or not? He loves his footy. Yeah, he's, he's into it. Um, but, you know, that's one thing you've got to keep an eye on, I think, as a, as a dad. You know, the first question I think they ask at school is the footy question. So yeah. he, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. So I won't be putting any pressure on him. 
So, yeah, the footy's on the back burner at home. There's no doubt about that. We talk about building relationships with players. It's become it's become the, you know, in vogue right now to be yeah. to be not just a father figure but a, a mate, uh, an arm around type coach. That that's clearly you. How, how do you how have you developed that, and how do you continue to work on that? Um, I think we're all different as coaches. Uh, my, my philosophy on it's changed a little bit as we've gone. You, you, you can't be their mate. Yeah. Um, and the old get them over for dinner and get involved in their lives, that's something that I think you've got to try and tap into. But I don't know if the player wants that. I think they want um, support. Uh, they want to be respected. They want a sanctuary when they get to the club. Um, and they just want to know that you care. So you don't have to be best friends with them. Um, a lot of them just want honesty as well about where they're at. So those sort of things I'm, I'm aware of. Our assistant coaches do a lot of the groundwork. So the relationships and the, the getting around real deep into their development is our coach's responsibility. I'm, I'm overseeing that a little bit. So I don't show vision to our players. That's our coach's job. Um, I try and keep things big picture. But the, the awareness of our players and the care is really important, really, really important. So do you find yourself talking more about their sheer football or their life as, as a package? Yeah, it's probably less the football, more about, especially the senior players, you know, are they getting enough time off for their family? You know, every second week we have a new kid arrive. Um, Nathan Vardy had a baby last week, um, Jack Darling the week before. So are they getting enough time off? Um, trying to read those cues. You know, some of our players have done everything of pre -season. Andrew Gaff has been training for five months, so um, does he need a rest? Now, those type of things, that they're the conversations you have um, about where they're at. And the footy is obviously there, but um, they get enough fuel for that. And mine's a bit more bigger picture. Can you tell us about the story of Tom Cole's debut? I know it had a special place um, oh, yeah. at the club and, and, and special place in your relationship with Tom. Um, yeah, I look, without going into a, a heap of detail, he, he, he went through some, a tragic situation with his father in, in, in pre-season. So we gave him t some time off and... Drafting these kids from country Victoria uh, when you're going through situations where um, you have a, a sick father, you, um, you've got to give him some time out. So he was going really well, but um, we had to give him a bit of a chop out for a week or two. And uh, that was right at the end of pre-season and um, unfortunately he missed round one, but he, he, he debuted pretty quickly after that. And um, yeah, being a part of that was, was quite emotional, obviously not as emotional as what Tom would have gone through, but the club knew what they had to do and, and giving that support was really, really important for us. So yeah, that, was a, that was a special time for him and for us. But for you personally, yeah. is, is it true that you flew back to Melbourne to see his father? Oh, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't think that's out of the... You know, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of coaches would do that. It's just a bit different. You've got to fly to Melbourne, then drive to Bendigo, whereas quite often it's you might have to drive around the corner. So it's just a bit more time-consuming, Kingy, but it's not something that, that, that wouldn't stop you from doing it. So... Um, I wasn't alone that we had two or three support staff from the, from the club as well just to just to show our support and the fact that we care for, for the boy more than just his ability as a player. And that's something that I think a lot of clubs would do. That aside, Tom, Tom's situation aside, is that something you've done regularly to, to, to go and see parents outside of outside of ours, if you like, that uh, maybe maybe even the player doesn't, doesn't know um, about? Yeah, we keep in contact. Yeah, sometimes without the player... You know, totally knowing what's going on. We think it's, it's important to keep them in, in the loop, especially the kids these days that we pick up from interstate, which is probably half our list, or a bit under half. So making sure that parents are comfortable with, you know, I've got a daughter now who's 16. It's like in a year's time, if she went over to Melbourne to in a completely different environment, um, knowing what's going on, I think they just want to know what's going on, mate. So that's, that's really important for, for not just me, but our, our welfare department are, are really, you know, Serge, Ian Miller's a, a big one for that. He's very well connected with the parents and I think they stay connected with them uh, right through their careers. Very difficult to stay top of the tree in the AFL cycle yeah. at the moment. There's no doubt about that. You come off a premiership, every club's looking at what you've done behind the scenes, what you've done on field, and there's a, quite a, uh, a point of difference with the way you've played. How hard is it for you now to, to not just stay with the pack, but stay ahead of the pack? Yeah, trying to guess a little bit of that. You know, we, it's one thing as a coach I've probably learnt a little bit over the years, trying to not copy, but, geez, the Bulldogs did this well. Maybe the game's going in this direction. We should make sure we do that pre-season, and then you do it. And um, not that it doesn't work, but it doesn't work for us. So I went through that, and our coaches went through that for a couple of years about when we got to, to the club together, it was the stuff I learned at Hawthorne. 
Um, so that's the first thing you implement, some of the, the fundamentals of the game that I, I learnt. And then it's... Um, you know, they win the Premiership that year, um, then they beat us the next year. So I think we, we caught up pretty quickly to where the game was in terms of um, what I'd learnt. But then the Bulldogs win one and the Richmond win one and you start thinking, geez, maybe we should start doing this and this. But I, I think more and more now that what I've learned is you've you got to look at your list, what are you good at, um, can you make that your own? Um, so no doubt we innovate a lot and we try and innovate but we, we don't want to get too special with it all. The fundamentals are the most important thing. That's a Dennis. There you go. There's, there's give a me one. I wanted one from you. Yeah. Um, when you talk to coaches they tell, you about the, they tell you about the game changing every six, eight, yeah. ten weeks, whatever that marker may be. How many times did it change for you in 2018? Uh, probably a, bit, a little bit less than, than years gone by. The comp, no doubt, um, there's a couple of transitions throughout the season. You know, the, the speed of the game does definitely slow. Defence catches up um, to attack, I think, in the first six or seven rounds. You sort of, scoring goes down and then you get a little bit more settled on, on what you think you need to do as a, as a club. So we, we had a really good first half. We lost round one, but then we won ten in a row. So we, we didn't mess with it too much, but we did tinker a couple of things and we lost a few players as we went on so uh, a little bit more role driven I suppose Kingy we, we become this year rather than re-strategising every week we had specific roles and we stuck to that the whole year. Was there any point over the last 18 months and more so this year where you thought you know what the pressure is finally off on me the coach in <laughs> Perth because... Are you serious? <laughs> well no I am because I, I feel like you've been under the hammer over there you come in after, after John Worsfold an, an awkward time for most people to come in, when you see what's happened at Essendon post Kevin Sheedy, yep. a tough time to come in and take the reins. And if there was ever going to be a dip um, in the win-loss chart, then the heat was going to come. Yeah. It was there. It was evident for all to see at the start of probably last year um, and maybe a fraction earlier than that, six yeah, months before. I think my first year, uh, you know, we, we missed finals. We didn't play finals. Um, taking over some from someone like Wushu, I probably just didn't have the maturity to understand that. I, I just thought, oh, well, it's, it's, you know, he's a club legend. Uh, I'm not. So that's the way it is. I, I didn't think too deeply about that, mate. Not, he'd been there for 11 or 12 years, so it was probably time for a, a bit of change anyway. Um, I think he'd be the first to admit that. So uh, I didn't... Maybe the pressure was there and I didn't see it or feel it. Maybe they kept me from it. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, halfway through 17, I think there were some questions asked, and it doesn't take much for things to snowball. And I don't think that's exclusively with me. I think with any club, you lose a couple, someone questions your performance as a coach, a past player bobs up, and then all of a sudden it's on 360 or the couch, and then, you know, the spotlight's on. I think that's just part of the job. So I haven't looked at that as, uh, you know, something that I've been too aware of. Uh, the club's really, really good at keeping things stable. Trevor Nisbet's an elite in that area. He's probably seen that 20 times. So talking to him about, mate, you know, this is not new and it's not just you. So trying to get your head around that um, wasn't too difficult, to be honest. Uh, and we finished sixth in 2017. So. You know, in, it, in my eyes, that, that's not a bad, terrible year. We had an old list, uh, ageing list, and we we lost some players, and we didn't we didn't go all the way. That was disappointing, but we learned a lot, and um, I think there's just different pressure every year. We'll be, there'll be different pressure this year, mate, that we've got to deal with. So that's all part of the job. Do you feel the criticism? Do you feel when those pointed comments come? Do you uh, do you recognise them? Do you do you bank them? Do you know who said them? Or? <laughs> Uh, not personally, but when it comes to our players, I've become very sensitive. Um, and I think that, once again, is part of your growth as a coach. They become very, very protective of your players. So if I snap at anything, it's when, there's, when my players are criticised. I really don't like it, and I do remember it. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. Um, you, can't, you can't hide from that emotion. And, and you obviously share that with the player? and, and you. No, no, but they know I've got their backs. So that's, I think, once again, I'm not alone here as a coach. I think everyone, you know, once you get to know them and you, you, you buy in on the person um, and you know how hard they work when it's not going well for them or you think the, the criticism's not justified. Um, do you pick up the phone? No, no. Maybe that's what I need to do, mate, <laughs> to get my release. But it fuels you a little bit. Um, you really want that player to succeed. Not, not for that the criticism but just to uh, see them happy and enjoy their, 
their football and not think too much about the pub the public side of the game is it's really difficult so when the spotlight's on um, like when you were potting Mark Lacroix <laughs> years ago <laughs> I knew you'd bring that up um, you know you just really want to see them succeed not for that reason but just 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 so they're happy <laughs> well I think he got his own back Tell us about where to now for you personally. You, you, you win this premiership. It's an yep. endorsement that you that you're a, a great a AFL coach and been able to take an interstate club all the way to Melbourne and win. It's a tough thing to do yeah. over the last few years. It hasn't been a great success rate uh, for those interstate clubs. Where, where to now? What do you set your goals on now? Do you have a big picture goal? Uh, well, look, personally, not not really. No, uh, it's it's more where we at as a club is is really important to understand. Like, are we are we on the way up? Are we stabilised or are we on the way down? I suppose you you need to read the cues of, of where you are as a club. And I think the maturity of our group, you know, tells me that we need to get obviously our, our list healthy. That's the first thing. Um, different phase for us. We're, we're I'm more in tune with their families and what the life brings to those players. So. Understanding where we're at is the next phase for me and still working through it. This time of the year for every club is difficult as a coach to go, where are we at? How are we going? Because you're not playing against anyone. You think you're going OK or you think you're not. You don't really know until you start playing some games. So it's a, it's a bad time to ask me, King, because mm. I, I, um, I'm always uh, a bit of a cynic about where we're at this time of year. I'm worried. <laughs> um, but I was worried last year, this time of year. So trying to be aware of that is... As a, as, a, as a club's the first priority. And then, um, yeah, when we, when we start playing games, I've got more direction. Well done. Fantastic. Thanks, mate.